right, so we're just going to wait for a little bit. Let's see who comes in. And then we'll get going on the 60 minutes recap and get to live questions. Hey everyone, thanks for joining. Um, today I'm just going to do a live to go over the uh, 60 Minutes Australia uh, interview that I did and that just came up this weekend um, or just last weekend. So for those who haven't seen it, you can go to 60 Minutes Australia YouTube channel. Um, I, have, I have links for that in, well, I'll put it, I'll put it in this as well, but I also have links in my uh, different posts and everything like that. But you can just go to 60 Minutes Australia and it's, uh, it mentions carnivore diet and uh, sort of lumps it in with uh, different sort of bad diets and things like that. But we'll get to that. So the, you know, my experience with it was, was really great. It was really positive. You know, everyone on the 60 Minutes team was, was excellent. They were, they were all really, really nice people. They were all genuinely interested in uh, what we had, had, what we were talking about. Obviously, there's a bit of uh, skepticism with something as, as uh, new and different as uh, eating this way. And that's totally understandable. But they were awesome. They were really, really good. Uh, we we spent the whole day in Sydney, starting in the morning. We did the, the interview, face-to-face -face interview part. We spoke for about 20 minutes, and then we went off and did sort of like a workout on Bondi Beach at the open air gym, and then went and had some steaks at um, I think it's La Masseria, if I'm pronouncing that right, just down on Bondi Beach, which is awesome. And the the owner Matt there, and I spoke for a while as well. And he's a really nice guy and has a great set up there if people hasn't haven't seen that that's it's like a, a butcher but you know you, you can go into like a normal butcher shop but then they'll just cook the steaks for you too so you can you can buy meat and go home with it or they can actually cook it for you and so um just a quick question there i just saw here someone said you know when do you typically see improvement in health being on a carnivore diet generally pretty pretty soon so usually about two weeks you get most of this junk out of your system you feel a lot better and uh, and then you start just feeling better and better and better. You need to make sure you're eating enough, make sure you're eating enough uh, fatty meat, get enough fat, eat till you're full, eat till meat stops tasting good. And yeah, but generally people will see significant improvements within a couple of weeks and then they'll just get better after that. So um, the uh, the interviews all went fine. And, and you know, at first, you know, there was quite a bit of you know, skeptical sort of questions like, really, and what about this and that? But at the same time, you know, as, as the day wore on and we talked about more things behind camera, behind the camera, people were getting more and more interested, sort of, you know, sort of sent people different, different links and things like that, that they could sort of check out. And what do you know, at the end of the day, when everyone was having their lunch, everyone just ordered steaks and they didn't get anything else. So uh, at least for the, you know, the camera crew and things like that, that you know, at least they, uh, uh, certainly seem to uh, be interested in that as well. So hopefully they'll look into that more. And, um, but someone said I should invoice them for my time though. It's, um, no, you know, the thing is though, is that this is going to be met with skepticism from the mainstream. Of course it is, you know? And so, you know, when we, um, when we, uh, you know, are first sort of making, an appearance on the like, mainstream venues and things like that it's going it's going to be questioned that's just that's just how it's going to be and so you, we have to we have to sort of expect that and but hopefully just enough people will see that and maybe you know be interested or intrigued enough to then say okay well what is this guy on about that sounds really weird but maybe i'll go see what he has to say or maybe i'll go see what he has to say to see just how full of it he is and then they go see and they go hmm, actually no maybe that that makes a bit more sense than i thought it did uh, or than I thought it would. So I think that's that's what we can hope for at the moment. And even um, and even when people even when people are are um, you know skeptical of this and, and putting out you know posts that are just like, well, is this is this really the right thing to do? Other people get interested. And so I've had other news outlets, um, well, one in particular that's um, that wanted to you know, do another interview with me to, to talk more about it. So that's good. So that opens the door for more things. Now, as for what they sort of put out there, um, obviously it would have been nice if they 
uh, were very positive about it. They weren't negative about it in the sense that they said this is a bad idea, but they had they you know lumped me in with a lot of other groups that were not necessarily something that they were speaking positively about. So I sort of got lumped in with with people that they were saying, or oh, these people are just they're just sort of after uh, diet fad to try to sort of you know get money out of people and you know sell their products or something like that. Where the whole idea with the carnivore diet is there's no product. There isn't a product that you that you have to have, and that was one of the things that they talked about with that Dr. Ed's character, uh, who people you know would probably know. He he did a video about me that he had no basis uh, for doing, just sort of made up a bunch of nonsense, uh, having not actually watched the video, and so it was very easy to just do a response video to him showing that he uh, was quite ignorant on that subject, and um, you know really needed to do a better job at uh, of researching what the hell is going on, and. Um, Hey, Rory, good to see you, buddy. And um, so, you know, they were saying, there's like, yes, well, you know, they come up with this problem that you have that you have and only their solution will fix it. And so, you know, then they'll they'll sell it to you, which is actually the vegan crowd, you know, because they say, you know, like, like, look at the um, the Game Changers documentary. They said that. Well, you need protein. And but you can't get it from meat because meat's really bad for you and it's toxic. And these people that go away from meat, they do so much better. And look at these just top athletes and they're so wonderful. But you need protein. So where are you going to get it? Well, it just happens to be that, um, you know, that uh, uh, James Cameron, who is the executive producer of Game Changers, just happens to own one hundred and forty million dollars worth of a pea protein company. Wouldn't you know? So you need protein, can't get it from meat. Oh, just happen to have this product right here for you. So that's not what the carnivore diet is. The carnivore diet is you don't need these products, you don't need to do anything, you just need to eat meat. You just need to eat the right thing. And that was actually something that Dr. It said. Say, hey, you know, the secret to health is very easy. You just have to eat right and, and move your body. I agree with that. We just disagree with what eating right is. And um, you know, and uh, if we're both sort of doing the same thing, you know. I think our results speak for themselves. You know, I, you know, I've been doing this for a very long time. He's been doing what he's doing for a while, and our results are entirely different. So, you know, I think that it, that can uh, tell you something there as well. And um, but the idea is the same. You don't need a product. You don't need to sell anything. You don't need anything extra. And we actually talked about that in that twenty-minute segment. And then we actually talked more at the restaurant. Uh, and so obviously there was, you know, it was a good 30 minutes of our discussion that that didn't get used fine, but we did cover this and we did talk about how, you know, there was a lot of, you know, cover ups from the food industry, pasting over, you know, 100 years of medical literature and science and saying that, that meat wasn't good for us and fat was bad for us in order to protect their product and to push their own agenda. And that's not good. And that's something that's, that's well documented. It's in the peer reviewed literature. This is not a question. This is not up for debate. This is a historical fact. And we have documentation of this in, in the published literature. So, you know, that's not really uh, in question. Um, so, you know, me saying, hey, you know, you can, we can actually, we, we're actually spending trillions of dollars a year in America and around the world treating medical conditions that are a direct result of eating the wrong thing. And all we have to do is eat the correct thing to our biologically appropriate design. And you don't need any of these. And we save trillions of dollars and that's redirected in much more worthwhile and fruitful directions, right? So so I was arguing that you, you can get away from these things, you can get off these medications, you can get a better life and uh, better health and, and save money, save a lot of money uh, by just eating properly. So I didn't think it was entirely fair to lump me in with uh, these other people that they were saying, you know, these guys are just scamming you and they're just trying to, you know, get your money and have, have a product and things like that. Um, and so, you know, that's, uh, you know, I didn't think that that was entirely fair. Now they didn't say that, well, this is Anthony and he's trying to sell you something, you know, but that was the premise of the entire show. And so that's sort of, that's sort of, it was sort of guilt by association in that uh in that regard so which was a bit disappointing but at the same time you know it got some people out there thinking about this sort of stuff and uh, and at least being you know made aware of it made aware that there there is a discussion and there are people sort of doing this and i think there was, there's been a really good response to uh these 
you know, you know these these videos by people going in and and commenting and saying, hey, you know, I've I've you know gone on carnivore and this changed my life. I lost you know 120 pounds. I've reversed these med these illnesses. I've come off these medication, and this has really helped me. This is really changing people's lives, and you guys shouldn't be uh, you know uh, you know critical of it. Well, you should be critical of anything, but you shouldn't be uh, you know derogatory. And you should at least give it a chance and uh, and allow people to to, you know, see what they think or at least look into it more. You know, it was great that they had me on for a conversation. It would have been even better if they had, you know, actually published that entire conversation, because I think it would have been much better for people. I think it would have been interesting for people to actually hear the entire arguments. There were, I mean, I think they did choose uh, some good choice uh lines and then good choice arguments that i made but they certainly weren't the, you know the whole body of, of arguments they certainly weren't certainly weren't the whole you know the, the whole totality of our discussion because we i mean we spoke for like 30 minutes on camera you know like 20 minutes in that original segment and then like another 10 minutes uh when we were when we were eating steaks and we were talking about you know these, these different uh, you know these different facts that you know like the sugar companies paid off all these uh, Harvard professors, and this is this is published in the medical literature and the Journal of American Medical Association, and uh, you know, and, and a lot of other things as well. So I think it's important to have those conversations, and hopefully this this opens the door. And then subsequently, the Daily Mail in the UK actually ran with a story, basically taking sort of verbatim what was was said in in that, and. Um, and uh, sort of published it, but it was it was sort of funny. They said, you know, this bizarre contention of, of eating only meat from a doctor who hasn't eaten vegetables in five years or something like that. I thought it was very funny, and you know, obviously people lost their minds in the comments. Oh my God, what the hell is this? Blah 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 blah. But at the same time, then people came on and and replied and they were saying, hey, this is there's actually more to it than this, and uh, there's actually something here, and people are getting a lot better. I'm getting a lot better. I get it. I've gotten improve my health by you know you know all these different metrics so it, it's really good i appreciate everyone who who did that who went on there and, and told their story and, and said how how much this has helped them because it's really important when people see these these videos and these and these stories they're going to be very very taken aback and be like this is crazy this goes against everything my my mommy told me and so therefore it has to be wrong and so um, and so being able to go on there and people saying, actually, this isn't, this isn't a problem. You know, your mom did the best she could, but she was, she was told a lie too. And, you know, and this is, this is how it is. And, and people's lives are getting a lot better because of this. So, um, you know, so the, um, you know, so I think that's great. And I think getting that, that conversation out there in the air, open air and talked about more it has been great. So. That's been awesome. So if people have questions about that, uh, happy to field them. Or if they have other questions, we'll try to try to field those as well. And we can just have a, have a bit of a talk. I do have to go in about 30 minutes because I have an interview to do. Um, but uh, we can we can certainly chat until then. Um, just a uh, question here from uh, Vizian Air. Why am I not losing weight? I feel amazing, by the way. Well, the main thing is that you feel great. The main thing is you focus on your health. There are a lot of people that will lose significant amount of weight early on, and that's great. But you also have to understand that this isn't always the case, that people will lose a weight immediately. But uh, it will happen eventually. You know, If you have excess fat to lose, that, that's going to come off. People are going to have a lot of hormonal disruption and a lot of problems with their metabolism and their health that their body is saying, hey, you know, we need to hold on to this because they've been starving and fasting and eating the wrong things for so many years that, that their metabolism is just shot and their hormones are shot. And they're, they're in a state where their body's in, in a state of perpetual panic and fear that you're in a famine because that's what you, that's the signals you've been giving it is that there isn't enough food, there is not enough nutrition available. And so it needs to sequester and store and hang on to this extra uh, fat because you're going to die otherwise, right? And that's it. that's just how we work. And so eventually, those hormones like leptin will start normalizing, and other things will improve as well. Your thyroid function will probably get better as well. Your metabolism will start ramping up, and uh, and then all of a sudden the fat will start coming off. Also remember that 
it's not about weight loss. You're you're worried about fat loss and body composition. And so um, when people are going on this, it's actually a lot easier to put on muscle mass. And you actually and people actually do increase bone density as well. And that's something that people say you can't really do after 25. Bullshit. I see it happen all the time. Um, and so if you're eating a proper diet, and especially if you're exercising and doing resistance training, you will put on bone density. And, uh, and even if you're osteoporotic or of osteopenia, you can improve your bone density, even uh, in middle age or late age. I see it happen all the time. And so uh, don't, don't, don't listen to um, people that say that because that's in the context of eating stupid things and eating the wrong thing and eating the wrong diet and not being healthy, eating a whole bunch of plant-based, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, well, if you're eating that, you're not going to be able to put on bone density. I agree with that. And you're going to strip your body of minerals and uh, yeah, and your bone density will go down. So don't do that. Eat a proper diet and your bone density will go up. Your muscle density will go up and therefore your weight will go up as well. And so you may not lose weight, but are you not losing weight because you're not losing fat or are you not losing weight because you're losing fat, but you're also gaining muscle and bone density. And so that's something you have to think about as well. So when I first started this, uh, I just stopped eating vegetables. I lost 23 pounds or 10 kilos in 10 days. And then I stopped losing weight. I, I, I lost no weight. I stayed exactly the same weight for months after that. But my body was completely transforming. I was just stripping fat off my body and gaining a lot of muscle. So I, I, it, I exactly matched uh, my muscle gain and fat loss. Don't know why. Don't know how that that you know why it was just a perfect one for one like that. But it was. And so I gained uh, no weight, but I lost no weight at all. But I lost a ton of fat. And so that could be happening as well. So look at how your appearance take monthly. And I mean, monthly, don't take daily or weekly. You need to just you give it some time and take monthly pictures, you know, in the mirror uh, with, you know, sort of you know less clothes on so you can see your body and see the changes that are being made because you might be changing your body habits. You might be changing your body composition. You can also get a DEXA scan, body composition scan now. And then in six months, this isn't this isn't going to happen overnight for some people. Some, and, and even for me, you know, I was, it, it took eight months before I got to a, a stable body fat percentage and, and then just maintained that eight months. But you know what? It was a dramatic difference all the time. So I got, I got uh, very, very big results pretty rapidly just from like lifting weights. And then I was back playing rugby as well. Uh, and then I, you know, hurt my knee and I couldn't play rugby anymore. So I, um, uh, after that, I was just lifting weights, and that's actually when I started losing weight. Was when I stopped being able to play rugby and do squats because I wasn't I wasn't able to do squats and I wasn't able to run. And so my leg I actually lost muscle mass, which is why I lost weight. And so that wasn't weight I wanted to lose. So you know you don't actually necessarily want to lose weight. You want to lose fat, and you want to put on muscle, and you want to put on bone density. So just be mindful of that. But number one, first and foremost, think about your health. You feel great. That's great. Make sure you're eating enough. Make sure you're getting enough fat especially because this is an important nutrient. It's not just, it's not just a calorie source. It is a, an essential nutrient with essential uh, amino acids or sorry, uh, fatty acids and uh, fat soluble vitamins. So it's very, very important to get enough fat. It's very important to get enough meat. And if you do that continually, you will stimulate your, your metabolism to ramp up and you will lose fat. And so you will, but you know, look at Kelly Hogan, you know, she has a very good story of she actually gained weight and she thinks she was actually not only putting on muscle, but probably putting on fat as well for about six months. And then overnight, all of a sudden it just, things just started just, just dumping off of her. She's been very, very slender for you know, the next 13 years and, um, and has been, you know, you know, very good since then. So, you know, and, and been able to maintain that, that uh, body habits ever since then. And that's, and that's what people notice. This is, this is, you lose the weight, you gain the health and you can maintain it and sustain it for the rest of your life. Because this is not a diet. You're not dieting. You're just changing the way you're eating. You're changing your lifestyle. And that's, and that's, and you're going to perpetuate that. So these are new habits. These are new, uh, you know, this is a new way of living. And, and that's how I look at it. I don't, I'm not on a diet. This is just how I eat. You know, a lion is not on a diet. That's just how they eat. 
you know, cows are not on a diet. They're, oh, they're so restrictive. They're only eating grass. They have good. That's because that's the only thing that's food for them. And, uh, and, and that's the way they eat. And so this is the way I eat. And this is the way I think biologically humans are meant to eat. And so, you know, if, um, if you are eating that way, good things will happen. And so even if you're not losing weight, even if you're not losing fat right away, eventually it will, eventually it will happen. So focus on your health first and foremost, how you're feeling, your energy levels, your sleep quality, you know, medications you might be coming off of, the money you're saving from not going to doctors and getting all these expensive treatments and all these benefits in your life. Focus on that as a distant second. Think about your body composition. Never at all does does weight on the scale make the list. Okay, that is not something you should ever worry about. If you're ever going to worry about something like that, you worry about body composition, not weight on the scale. Okay, because weight on the scale doesn't matter. It, your health matters, and not everybody's going to be able to to get back down to, you know, an ideal teenage body fat percentage. Unfortunately, um, people's bodies are are made a bit differently. The things that we've done to our bodies are different, and so. Sometimes that you can't undo all of that, but what you can do is you can maximize your health and you can maximize your energy and you can, you can get off a lot of medications, a lot of medications, and you can stop in their tracks. A lot of these chronic diseases and stop them before they start or in, in many cases, reverse them. Um, and David, thank you very much. He just gave me a fan super chat. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right, so let's see if we have any more questions here. Oh, goodness. Okay, so Nat Lavelle asks, uh, Dr. Chafee, what is your opinion on fruits for someone like myself who is extremely active and trains a lot? You always mention that plants are bitter and don't want us to eat them, but uh, fruits are sweet. So uh, fruits are delicious, yeah. Well, but sugar's a drug, and, that, and that's the main thing. So this is why, yes, you know, if something tastes bad, that's your brain and your tongue giving you a clear signal and sign that there's something bad in there. And it says, don't eat this, spit this out. Right. Um, so if something tastes bad, then I would say you really don't want to eat it. That's a very good rule of thumb, but that doesn't mean that everything that tastes good necessarily is good for you. There are outliers like sugar and fructose in particular is very, very sweet. Most of the carbohydrates are mildly sweet at best. And well, except when you go on a carnivore diet, then your, your taste of sweet gets a lot stronger. So like when I drink whole milk, it's like I'm drinking ice cream. It's crazy, you know, and, and I don't want to stop. So I, I, let, I don't let myself really do that. But fructose is much, much sweeter, much sweeter. And this is thought to be because we recognize that as something safe that we aren't, that isn't going to kill us if we eat it. Right. So we don't know of any plants that contain fructose that are acutely poisonous that will kill you that day if you eat it. OK, that doesn't mean there are no defense chemicals in it, like citrus fruits. All citrus fruits have furanocumarins, which are UV sensitive and uh, can burn your skin. You get it on your skin like you're squeezing lines are notorious for this. You, you squeeze those, they get on your hands and gets in the sun and you blister and get second degree burns. Um, and if you eat them, you'll get more more sensitive to these these uh, to UV light as well overall. And grapefruit is another one. Um, all citrus, all citrus have these furanocumarins, but specifically grapefruit is a good example because this is something that has to be detoxified. You have to detoxify these furanocumarins, and your liver does this. And there's certain enzymes that do that, and those certain enzymes also are the ones that metabolize certain medications. And I believe statins are one of them. So you cannot eat grapefruit with a number of different medications because it will use up too much of that uh, that that uh, um, enzyme, and you will end up either not metabolizing the you'll not metabolize the medications properly. So you either have too much or too little, right? And so you can get toxic or ineffective doses of the medications that you're on. So that's that's you know to do with that. But whether or not they have those things, sugar itself, fructose in particular, is not good for you. First of all, slams up your, your insulin. You don't want that. That puts you into a fat storage metabolism as opposed to a fat burning metabolism. It blocks proteolysis. It blocks lipolysis. So you are not able to be, uh, you are not able to access your fat stores if you if you raise your insulin up. Okay, so you eat, even if you eat fruit and you're active, yeah, okay, look, you're going to burn off those carbs. Great, 
But you know what you're not going to be able to do is mobilize your fat stores for the rest of the workout. So you're going to have to keep having those little orange wedges or juice or, or you know, carby supplements to keep perpetuating your energy. Because once you run out of your glycogen and your liver and your muscles, that's it. You're tanked, you hit the wall, and that's it. So if you're doing a shorter workout, fine, okay, it's not going to be a big deal. But if you're doing a longer, more heavy workout or playing like a, you know, a, a rugby game or, you know, AFL game, NFL game, whatever you're playing – you're going to, you're going to run out of glycogen and you're going to feel like garbage. And so, uh, if you don't eat any carbs whatsoever, you don't, you don't fall into that trap and you will always run on your fat stores and you're not going to run out of your fat stores. Not, not anytime soon. Anyway, you can push yourself as hard as you want to. And fructose has been shown to be addictive in the same way as cocaine, heroin, and meth and shown on MRI studies to kill the same areas of your brain as meth to the same extent as meth, okay? This is bad, this is bad stuff. And it also is metabolized and broken down into the same byproducts as alcohol. So it goes into the, it, it turns into the same offshoot chemicals, breakdown chemicals as alcohol. And so it causes the same damage from those chemicals as alcohol, okay? So fatty liver disease, cirrhosis, diabetes, heart disease, even implicated in things like uh, cancer and Alzheimer's disease. So this is not a good thing. And so that's why I avoid it. So my hard rule is no plants, no sugar, nothing artificial. And that goes for sauces, seasonings, and drinks as well. But obviously people can do whatever they want. You're going to be less damaged by it if you're, if you're um, you know, if you, if you are working out and active and you're just having some fruit, maybe not as much fructose as if you're drinking fruit juice. Obviously that's going to be a lot more fructose. And uh, some of the fiber and things like that actually block the absorption of, fi of fructose, fine. But it's not ideal. It's not exactly what you want to do. And you eat enough of this stuff, it will screw up your insulin and your metabolism. So for me, I don't think it's really worth it. But to each their own. Um, David asks, do you ever eat sardines? And thank you very much for the super chat, David. I appreciate that. Um, do you ever eat sardines or fish to get your omega-3s? Yeah, sometimes. You know, I, I do, um, I like sardines. And so, you know, maybe I get them sometimes. Beef has, has plenty of omega-3s. It has a lot more omega-3s if it's grass finished. So, you know, it's um, it's something that some people do where they'll, you know, if they're not, if they're not having all, you know, grass finished beef, um, they will have, that will have a good omega-3 content. Maybe they'll just eat some sardines or something like that with their steak so that they have a good omega-3 to omega-6 sort of ratio when they're eating. And so I, I think that's a that's a fairly decent thing to do. Uh, you want to get make sure that you're getting sardines that are just packed in water uh, without a bunch of seasonings and garbage and things like that, and especially not packed in oil because they don't pack them in fish oil. They pack them in sunflower oil or soybean oil or some other god-awful seed oil. So you don't want that. But, you know, so you want to get it, you want to get it in water um, if you can. And, um, or, you know, cod liver, I think tins of cod liver in, have it in their own oil. Probably not a bad idea as well. Um, I honestly haven't mo noticed too much of a difference in how I feel uh, adding in sardines um, to just eating beef. But, you know, I mean, some people that do like sardine fast and things like that, and they, they think that works really well for them. I haven't looked into that too much myself. Um, but, you know, you, you can experiment with things. And if you like adding in fish and sardines, you know, go for it. I mean, I do like fish. I just like beef more. And I feel, I feel the best on beef. But, um, you know, and if you're getting grass-finished beef, you'll get you'll get plenty of omega-3s. That'd, that'd be fine. Um, okay, there's one look up here from Instagram. Greetings from Greece. Tell us about carb cravings after eating beef and salt only. How do you get over it? Well, usually those, um, usually they go away. So usually um, you can uh, you can sort of get over it in the, in the first couple of weeks. So carb cravings will stay on because again, these things are addictive. Especially sugar is addictive. Fructose is addictive, just like cocaine and meth. And uh, again, gives a dopamine hit to the addiction centers of your brain, right? So it's a drug and it takes a while to get over drugs. Uh, but it, but just like any other, other drug, abstaining for a certain period of time, you will get away from that chemical addiction and your body can recover. And so for most people, carb and sugar cravings last about two weeks in general. That's a rough sort of thing for people. And 
Um, and so you know you feel good uh, after that. You generally don't need need uh, to worry about it after that. But if you are getting cravings, sometimes that, that can just be your brain saying, "Hey, we need more energy. We need more food." And um, and uh, and so maybe that that can be a hunger signal. You have to relearn your hunger signals going on a carnivore diet. And so it could be that um, so it could be that. Uh, you're just hungry. And so if you're getting those carb cravings, maybe think, okay, am I hungry? Maybe I should eat meat. And so you eat meat and you go, wow, this tastes good. That means you're hungry. If meat tastes good, you're hungry. If it doesn't taste good, you're not. And that's how you should, that's how you should relearn your hunger signals. Uh, meat tastes good when you're hungry and your body's giving you that positive feedback, right? It gives positive feedback with sugar as well. The difference is that sugar is a drug and that things that are drugs give you positive feedback and then they take, give me more, give me more, give me more, give me more, give me more. They never stop, right? But if something's good for you, like meat, and it's giving you positive feedback, as you give it more, that positive feedback gets less and less. And eventually it goes away. And then you don't have any positive feedback. And your body just goes, yep, we have enough. Stop eating. And in fact, if you keep eating meat after that, it will start tasting bad and you will not enjoy it. So, you know, it's um, that's how you tell the difference between... Uh, something that's good for you, giving you positive feedback, something bad for you, just giving you positive feedback. That's bad for you, giving you positive feedback. It's going to keep giving you that feedback. It's not going to go away like a drug, right? So if you are, if you are having carb cravings, eat more, right? And make sure that you're eating enough. And generally when you eat enough, especially fatty meat and you eat till you're full, you eat till meat stops tasting good. Generally you won't really have many carb cravings. And, uh, and after about two weeks, they just go away and you'll be good after that. So good luck with that. Uh, David, thank you very much for the super chat. I just said, awesome. Uh, thanks a lot, doc. Great point. No problem. Glad I, glad I was able to help. Um, Callie, Callie girl asks, do you recommend counting calories if you want to lose more than hundred pounds on carnivore? No, I don't, I don't recommend counting calories ever. I recommend just listening to your body. Your body knows what it wants and knows how much energy it wants. And you will you will find that probably aren't eating all that much uh, in comparison. Um, and so, you know, it's um, it's actually OK. So you can you can listen, you know, maybe some days you're, you're eating a steak and it's just like, well, this is, really isn't enjoyable. I don't really like this. And um, and that's OK. You don't have to eat. You don't have to eat that day. But you should eat as much as your body is asking you. Now, some people find that they aren't eating enough. And maybe they count calories to realize like, oh, Jesus, I'm, I am really under eating and I should really eat a lot more. And so that can be helpful. But I would never limit the amount of calories just because they're calories. First of all, calories are a stupid metric. Really, really, really not great because these are complex organic molecules. They have complex chemical interactions in your body. There are dozens of different uh, carbohydrates, they all have ex they all have unique chemical properties and interactions. There are dozens of different amino acids. They all have unique chemical interactions and properties. There are hundreds of fatty acids, and they all have unique and individual chemical reactions. You cannot, um, you cannot boil these down to just the amount of energy that is released when you burn them, because that's what a calorie is. So that's not a good metric. We are not combustion engines. We are chemical power plants, right? And so these, you eat these things. You cannot just say, oh, a calorie is a calorie is a calorie is a calorie because that that's honestly just insane. <laughs> and so, you know, if, if uh, someone is saying that and they're a doctor and they've taken biology and they've taken biochemistry and organic chemistry, like they need to go back and, and revise those books because that is a, a remarkably ignorant statement that it all comes down to just the amount of energy that's burned off from, from burning these sorts of things. There's a bunch of calories in wood, all right? Does that, does that mean anything significant to us? No, because they're, they're bound up in ways that we can't access and don't matter to us. But there's a lot of calories. Who cares? So it's important to, um, it's important to understand that. And it's important to understand that uh, you know, these are nutrients. Your body's going for nutrients. Fat is a nutrient. Proteins are nutrients. These vitamins and minerals are nutrients. And your body wants nutrients. It's not going for calories. It's going for nutrients. And so you need to give your body enough nutrients and nutrition. And so if you are doing that, you will actually stimulate your metabolism. You actually have, you, um, have your metabolism ramp up and you'll actually lose more weight. 
you know, we know this, like there, there are you know, bariatric surgeons and things like that will tell people after they've gotten a bypass um, that you have to eat at least 1200 calories a day. I believe that's for women, maybe you know, 14, a bit more for men. But anyway, for women, it's 1200. I remember one telling me and they said below that you won't lose weight. So why is that? You're eating less calories and all and we're just combustion engines. So you're eating less calories and you're not losing weight. Why is that? Well, because we're not combustion engines. We're very, very complex biochemical creatures. And so you actually reduce the amount of energy available and you're going to reduce um, your, your metabolism. Your body's going to go, hey, we're in a famine. We're, we don't have resources. We need to shut this down. We need to slow everything down so that we don't run out of resources and die because it's about self-preservation. Your body is smarter than you are, all right? It's going to it's know what to do. So you need to give your body what it needs and your body will do what it needs to do. And it, it sort of, it goes against everything we've been told, but again, all of this does. And everything we've been told for the last 40 years is complete garbage and verifiably garbage. So see for yourself, um, you know, and, uh, and make sure you're getting enough nutrition. You know, your body will stop you. It will start tasting bad when your body says that's enough. And uh, so you can listen to that. If you're eating correctly, if you're eating a biologic appropriate diet, you can listen to your biology, all right? It's one of the major senses, taste, right? And that and that will dictate, will tell you what, what it wants to do, okay? Um, super chat from uh, Christina Perez, thank you so much. Uh, what is your experience with carnivore and epilepsy? My son, 17, is getting flack from his dietitian. Well, his dietitian needs to read a damn book because there is a hundred years of medical literature on the subject of epilepsy and ketogenic diets. In fact, that's the only treatment we had for epilepsy for God knows how many decades. And before that it was fasting. And they figured out that you can have this ketogenic diet mimicked fasting, really fasting mimics ketogenic diets. But we have literally a hundred years of very robust scientific literature and experiments showing that epilepsy is, is helped uh, to, to a large extent and sometimes cured, not always, but sometimes cured by going on a ketogenic diet. Carnivore diet is a ketogenic diet, unless you're in the fruit and honey camp, which I would not recommend for people. I don't think that that's the right way to do it. I think that sugar is not good for us. And especially if you're talking about epilepsy or cancer or something like that, absolutely not. You do not want any of that stuff in your life. And so if someone has epilepsy, being on a carnivore diet is going to be exceptional for ketogenics, right? Being in a ketogenic state, which is better for your brain. You're fueling your brain in a better manner. And this, this seems to help with epilepsy. But number two, you are also eliminating a whole bunch of other neurotoxins that can interrupt your, your, your normal brain chemistry. And, um, uh, you know, think about caffeine. Caffeine was developed as a, a, a neurotoxin. It is a neurotoxin. And it was developed as an insecticide to kill insects trying to eat the plants, right? That affects your brain. And that can, uh, that can act in an excitatory sort of manner. That is the last thing you want to do if you have epilepsy, if you have a predisposition to get your neurons so excited that they, that they start a seizure. Um, that is not what you want. Okay, so I have seen a lot of people help with a ketogenic diet. Um, and I've seen some people that a ketogenic diet improved their epilepsy significantly, but wasn't quite enough to get them over the finish line. And then going on a carnivore diet seemed to help. And then one gentleman mentioned that the caffeine thing, he had, he had a cup of coffee and all of a sudden he had a, had a grand mal seizure. Bad, 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 bad thing to do. So he was like, this stuff's toxic. I'm not going anywhere near it. He was keto. This wasn't sugar filled coffee. It was black coffee, right? So that's something to think about as well. And so if the dietitian is saying, oh my God, you know, that's not good for you. They need to read a damn book. And that, and that, that really bothers me because they, if, if someone is, is a dietitian working with epilepsy patients, they should damn well know that. Um, that is, that is not a new thing. That is a very, very well established thing. And it's not even, and it's not even like, uh, oh, it wasn't as good as medications. No, it was, it was great. In fact, some places, cases it was even better. And, you know, there's people that are on four different medications and they're still having seizures and they go keto and, uh, and it goes away, right? Um, Johns Hopkins still uses a ketogenic diet to treat epilepsy. Number one hospital in the world. Ranks quite often, you know, changes every year. But, you know, quite often they are, they are the top hospital, if not, or one of the top hospitals in the world 
they still use a ketogenic diet, or at least last I checked, I saw a paper from them. I guess that's older now, probably like 10, 15 years old. But, you know, they at that time, they were still using a ketogenic diet. This is in the damn literature. It works. The reason that they switched to pharmacology is, A, big influence by big pharma, saying, hey, you should do this. You should just use medications. It's so much easier, blah, blah, blah. And, again, and it is easier. And so people said, don't worry about ketogenic diet. We have a pill now. They're safe and effective. And uh, it's easier. It's easier just to give someone a pill instead of counseling them and talking to them and trying to get them to change their diets radically. Right. And some people don't, don't want to do that. But you know what? A lot of people are fine. And I spoke to a lady. Her daughter was having seizures. And um, and I just sort of mentioned to her, I was just like, you know, actually, you know, there's there are a lot of different uh, there's tons of data on this where. Where, you know, for 100 years, we have, we have literature that a ketogenic diet can actually significantly help um, uh, you know, uh, epilepsy, especially in pediatric populations. And um, and I just said, so, you know, that's something you can look into, just a ketogenic diet, just cutting out carbs that can actually significantly help uh, epilepsy. And she just went, oh, oh, really? Wow. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, no, we'll try that just like that. So easy. There's no problem. Right. Um, we don't realize how willing, able, and eager people are for straightforward solutions like that and not having to dump in a bunch of chemicals in their body or their kids' bodies. And if they knew that there was a solution that is so elegant as just this dietary uh, remodeling that is, is going to help them in so many other ways as well, you know, if we don't even try that, I think that, I think that that's, um, that's a failure of, of the doctor and the clinician. You know, and after that, you know, if they were like, yeah, no, it's not really working for me. Fine. You know, there, there are meds there. And, but that's a second line to me. And then some people, I, I've heard some uh, people say that their neurologist said, no, you don't want to go on a ketogenic diet because if you come off a ketogenic diet, there's a rebound effect. First of all, bullshit. That's not true. Um, uh, in fact, the longer you go without a seizure, the less likely you are to have a seizure again. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, it's like, it's the same idea with medication. Well, if you come off your medication, uh, for epilepsy, well, then you, you might have a seizure. Like, okay, well, then don't come off your medication, right? Don't come off the ketogenic diet. You know, you're not going to have, if you have like a candy bar once, and all of a sudden just going to be primed to have a seizure. That's not the case. You know, if you if you go off of it and continue to stay off of it, yeah, you're going to you're gonna undo some of the, the good you did for yourself. But um, so anyway, uh, I, I take serious exception to people trying to dissuade people from, especially clinicians, from dissuading people to do do a ketogenic diet and actually get off meds and actually help themselves. I mean, I think that is just so irresponsible. I honestly consider it malpractice um, because, you know, these, these medications do cause harm. They're not benign and they're not, they're not free from a health perspective or a pocketbook perspective. And so this comes at a cost to people. It comes at a cost of their, of their lives. It makes them feel horrible. They have, you know, they, it changes their cognition. They're tired all the time. They gain weight. It's not good. And so, you know, not being on these things is, is better. And if they, if they can be, I think it's, they're very important if you need them, but uh, you don't always need them. Um, okay. So there's a couple of their super chats. Thank you so much. I, I am, I'm going to have to go after these two. So um, maybe don't give me more super chats uh, because I, I may not be able to answer them guys. So um, uh, one from uh, Hendo. Uh, says uh, calcium scan is 149 in a 59 year old male, no cardiac symptoms, not diabetic, 95% carnivore. Should I be concerned being on a carnivore diet? No, I don't think so at all. Um, you know, you, you're having that car, uh, calcium scan, um, that's, that's, that buildup takes years and years and years, you know, when you were not carnivore. Also, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a snapshot in time. And so you take that picture now, you stay on carnivore, that number can come down. I've seen it come down. It comes down in a lot of people. And we even see on uh, angiogram, things like that, blockages actually restore. Um, Dr. Um, Dr. Sean O'Mara has done studies with over 6,000 patients looking at abdominal MRIs, looking at visceral fat, found that like blockage, intracerebral blockages uh, actually reverse when you, when you get that visceral fat down. And he says... Not my words. He says, and he's the visceral fat expert. Carnivore diet is the best diet to get your visceral fat down. And then exercise, you want you want high intensity anaerobic exercise like sprinting, hit training, so high intensity interval training or weightlifting. Those are the best 
best things to do to reduce your visceral fat. And if you reduce your visceral fat, you can reverse uh, these blockages and, uh, and uh, 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 calcium scores. So that is, um, uh, so that's something you should look at and think about. Um, and then there's a super chat from, from uh, Robert. Just uh, thank you very much for the super chat. I didn't have a question attached, uh, but thank you very much for that. Um, and uh, thank you very much, David, again, uh, for a, a super chat. I really appreciate it. He just says, uh, give Anthony uh, 400 likes, people. He deserves it. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And yeah, if people could uh, like and uh, you know, hit the like button, share this around, leave a comment, that, that does help pull this out there. And I'm going to try to do more lives like this, probably same day, probably a little bit earlier, probably 9 a.m. my time on Fridays, which will be 9 p.m. Eastern time in the U.S., Thursday night, 6 p.m. Uh, PST uh, as well. So check that out. Um, and I'll start doing that more regularly, I think. And um, oh, and just the last super chat. Thank you very much uh, for that. Sharon, please, please uh, don't give me any more super chats, guys, because I really do have to go in two minutes. Um, but Sharon says, my doc says I can't do carbo because I don't have a gallbladder. Well, your, your doctor doesn't know um, your physiology because gallbladder is not where bile is made. The liver makes bile and your liver will still make bile. Um, it just won't store it in a gallbladder and it'll just go out into your into your bowels, right? And so you just, sometimes you won't be able to eat like a huge amount of fat at the same time. It'll, it'll just sort of go through you uh, because you don't have enough bile. It takes, you know, 24 hours, you know, you're not, have, you're not gonna have 24 hours, 48 hours of, of bile stored up in your gallbladder um, or a week or two uh, stored up in your gallbladder that you can push out in one go and get like a huge body of fat in one, one sitting. So you might just have to split up your fatty meals throughout the day, but bile is still there. It's still being made by your by your liver. And quite a lot of people form what's called a pseudo gallbladder, which is an outpatching of your common bile duct and acts exactly the same as a gallbladder. So it has the exact same fu function. And, um, you know, and, and, and so you, you may not even have an issue with that. So there are a lot of people doing carnivore and they just eat once a day, they eat a big fatty meal and they don't get diarrhea from the overflow of the un unabsorbed fat. So yes, you can absolutely do gall uh, carnivore without a gallbladder. Um, you will have, uh, you have no problem with that. You just may need to split up your meals throughout the day and, uh, that's fine. So it's easy to do. Um, and then last question is, can carnivore reduce colon polyps? 100%. That is, um, that has been shown to be strongly associated with insulin resistance. And so any ketogenic diet, uh, will, uh, have, a, will, will, will reverse colon polyps and even skin tags. Basically, colon polyps are skin tags on the inside, right? And so it'll help your skin tags. There's sort of dark discoloration under the axilla. Uh, that can that that can be from insulin resistant, high insulin, chronically high insulin as well. So you come off all that nonsense. You come off the carbs. And again, when I talk about carnivore, I mean a ketogenic carnivore diet. I do not ever talk about you know having fruit and honey and things like that and not being in a state. Uh, or on a ketogenic diet, you're not going to be in ketosis all the time, but you know, you shouldn't be eating a whole bunch of carbs. So if you're on a carnivore diet, if I'm saying a carnivore diet will help X, Y, and Z, it is because you know, it, part of that is the, is the keto part of it. So there are a lot of studies, there aren't a lot, all this, all these studies looking at carnivore specifically with, you know, helping something, but there are thousands of studies showing that a ketogenic diet does these sorts of things and a carnivore diet is a ketogenic diet if done properly, right? So when I'm talking about that, I mean, it, I mean it as part of a ketogenic diet. I mean carnivore diet as a subset of ketogenic diet. So, um, so that's it. So, thank you, everyone. Uh, we're gonna wrap there. I, I do want to do these more often and maybe go for a little longer. Similar date and time, but um, uh, probably a little bit earlier. Probably, probably uh, um, be able to get on earlier if I can. Um, and just the last one I saw here, uh, do you eat one meal a day? Uh, yeah, generally, if you eat, eat enough fatty meat at one time, I'm generally not hungry for about 24 hours. If I'm working out more, I usually eat about twice because I'm, I'm not getting all um, enough, uh, you know, not going to get it all in one go. But yeah. Okay. Thank you all, every, uh, everyone. I really appreciate you coming on. It's great to see everyone here. Thanks for participating. And I uh, will see you next time. Take care.